right. Oh, we are live. Oh, yes, we are live. We got to get this party started because we got a lot to talk about. And it is week 12. Let's get this music started. Make sure I press the right button. <laughs> What did Prince do this week? Let me um, situate my camera so you can see me sometimes. <laughs> and also, I thought I already did this, but I guess I had to do a little setup for week 12. Welcome to the week 12. <laughs> what did Prince do this week, Bar? Yeah. Make sure All you right. tip the waitresses. <laughs> we got Cassandra Bradley first in the chat representing the ATL. We got Nick Felden. We got Andre Staley. What up, though? We got Christina from Minneapolis. We got JJ Loves Prince. We got Men Ray 10. To my peeps from Purple Rainy, New York City. That's right. I'm with you. Yeah. Sister Traw from Houston, Mira, we got Blay Brown, top of the morning, we got Shalimar from Michigan, we got Kyle, we got Olga, hi Olga, we got Tanja, all through the night, promise to see Jesus in the morning light, cause I watched Kyle Slam last night. <laughs> <laughs> What an amazing opening to a show. I finally got it. All right. Purple Cat Confetti, welcome from Denver. Welcome, Tracy. Good morning. As Morris E. Day would say, welcome, Anisha. Thank you so much for putting the page numbers in the chat. Love that. KMS 1984. Welcome, Chris Bournet. Happy Saturday. Welcome, C. Lee. Okay, C. Lee got 40 minutes. All right. That's oh. awesome. Body. And my timekeeper Kim is here. And Audra is in the house of 404, representing 404, which is the ATL for those of you who do not know. We got Brian B. We got Arlene from Snowy Canada. We got Olga from Rainy, California. We got TP. We got Kyle. Who's going to get that Jesse Johnson interview? Well. <laughs> Hopefully Michael Dean will. Dorothy Edwards. Hey, Purple Family. <laughs> yeah. Actually, so Cindy C is about Cindy Crawford. And, yes, Conrad Electra wrapped on Paisley Park Records. I love to see people learning stuff you think everyone knows. No, like this it's new information. Yes. Yeah. Yes. All right. So let's get started. Oh, I love that setup. For week 12 of What Did Prince Do This Week? We're going week to week, not day to day. Follow the detailed schedule at this QR code or this bit link. You do not need the expanded edition. But that's what we're rocking. All right, I was trying to get my, my mouse aligned up, but I couldn't find it to hit that beat. And these will be archived at Polish Solid as well as at M. Dean on YouTube. Please subscribe, like, and help spread the word. Hopefully we can get, yes. JJ loves Prince. Hold them up. Hold them up. Hold them up. up. And we're going to talk about this later. El Michelle, who's going to celebration? I am. And then we got Raywin in the house with all this purple love. And Raywin is wearing their purple oh. green shirt. Love that. Right on, Raywin. Right on. All right. And uh, I love this. <laughs> Kyle says, got that rat pack vibe popping. Get your cufflinks yeah. and ask Scott Michael Dean. Right. 
All right. <laughs> my Roland Martin. So uh, let's see. I don't know this. Um, Olga is saying Paisley Park just announced something. And for whatever reason, I can't <laughs> click on this link that you just sent me. Let me see here. So can you figure out what's going on? Hey, you. I'm, I'm on my <laughs> random song. What you going to do? I don't know where you're coming <laughs> High school. Yes. I don't know why that link. Let's see. All right. And our hashtag is WDPDTW. Says something, a night to remember, 421-24. Tickets are on sale, 325. All mm. right. That's good. Remember. All right. That's that's good. I, I'm glad that they're like celebrating a lot of stuff this year. We got the 20th anniversary of musicology. There's something going on in Paisley Park for that. So I really love all the love for Prince, because that's the reason why. Oops, it's out. Hold on. That worked. No, it didn't work. Try, try one more time. Yeah, it, focus. No, it's it is nah, nah. nah. There it goes. Yep. Yep. But then and then your and then your phone died, but we saw it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's a night to remember. It's not a Shalimar concert, it no. <laughs> You never know. You never know. Awesome. All right. Thank you, Olga, for uh, letting us know this breaking news. Breaking news. <laughs> yes. Breaking news. And the estate of Prince Rogers Nelson is not affiliated, associated, or connected with the What Did Prince Do This Week book club series. This is an independent endeavor. All right. So we just played Overnight Every Night, which is only on the CD. And Olga said, that's what I thought, Michael Dean, about uh, to remember Shalimar. Yeah. And on Overnight Every Night, it was composed by Prince, Eric Leeds, Levi Cesar Jr., Sheila E. So you got Eric Leeds on the track, Atlanta Bliss on the track, Prince on the track, Levi Cesar Jr. on the track, Sheila E. on the track. So we love anything with Prince and Eric Leeds on it. And this track is amazing. So if you haven't found a copy of Times Squared, I would highly suggest that you seek it out because it's one of the best albums ever. That's why I love it. So, all right. So week 12 of What Did Prince Do This Week? What We Know. And mm. this is our 63rd episode. Mm. And this week, there were no new songs, zero, but there were four studio visits total. Let's look at what transpired this week. So let's see. I can't even see myself. So 17 days and 17 days instrumental overdubs. Then on Tuesday, there are two cassettes and safety copies of 10 songs. It's red because Prince probably wasn't in the studio, according to Dwayne Tudal, the author of our book. And then on Wednesday, we got lots of edits, 17 days, Computer Blue, Darling Nikki, Possessed Instrumental, and then on Thursday, we got Mo edits for Computer Blue, Darlene Nikki, Sex Shooter, Beautiful Ones, Let's Go Crazy, and then on Friday, we have a very interesting compilation of Purple Rain, and in fact, I put the compilation that's listed in the accompanying playlist for the, for the week, so you might want to check it out, how it would sound if it was sequenced in that way. Mm. Um, because it's a, it's a, it's an interesting sequence. Like purple rain isn't at the end when doves cries at the beginning. Very interesting, mm -hmm. but we're going to get to that when we get to our reading. So let's get into it. And we're going to start off with Sunday, March 18th. And we're going to let Michael Dean, if you don't mind, start off with the reading. Yes. <laughs> All right. Uh, Sunday, March 18th, 1984, 17 days overdub, <clears throat> 17 days instrumental, possible overdubs and mix, Sunset Sound, Studio 3, 2 p.m. to 7.30 p.m., booked, locked, out, producer Prince, artist Prince, engineer Prince, assistant engineer Peggy Mac McQuarrie. This is a quote from Brenda Bennett. Prince always told me. Brenda, 
you can't be singing in a choir of 200 people and I'd still be able to pick out, well, I'm sorry, Brenda, you could be singing in a choir of 200 people and I'd still be able to pick out your voice. True that. I agree with that statement. <clears throat> Susan Rogers remembers the amazing music being created on a daily basis at this time. That was a great era for B-Size. I love 17 Days. That was that was one that he pulled out of the closet a couple times and reworked. Interesting. I don't know why he did that, but it was probably because he knew that there was something really good there that that he just tossed off and he figured he could make it better. Today's short session consisted of three hours of additional overdubs and two and a half hours of mixing 17 days and creating an instrumental version of the track. A newly recorded part consisted of Brenda Bennett denouncing <clears throat> a man's majestic macho attitude and her questions about when he will finally see how beautiful she is as a person as well as you can wait, 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 what? <laughs> <laughs> that's in the lyrics yeah as well as you can see my vagina uh, it is likely that this spoken section was recorded at prince's home studio let me pump my brakes for a second and y'all can pull my card uh, at any time this is in the song 17, 17 days. You said it was in the lyrics. What, what? It, well, it's it's actually in the extended version that's not released. Oh, uh, okay. I was just like technically, but it's it's on the interwebs if you do gotcha. your Googles, gotcha. Michael Dink says. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, back to the show. Uh, despite the original intention to have Brenda sing the lead and help shape the lyrics on the song, by this point, it was no longer considered to be a track for either Apollonia Six or even a potential Brenda Bennett solo project. <laughs> oh my God, I wanted that so bad. Man, Bennett's husband, Roy, has a theory about why Prince reclaimed the song. He says, I think the reason why 17 Days didn't go to the girls was just because he felt it was too good for them. He didn't want to waste it on something that's terrible to say. He didn't want to waste it on something that's terrible to say but on something he didn't feel was going to sell as much as that song could have sold, but then it ended up as a B-side. Hmm. Despite the original high-minded goals, it seemed that Prince had been losing interest in the Apollonia 6 album by this point, and he was treating it as an oblig obligatory, saying obligatory. Right? obligatory project instead of one he wanted to promote. It is possible that during this session, Jill Jones sang background for the track and that Sheila E. added additional drums and percussion as well as uh, tambourine. Status, an instrumental version of 17 Days remains unreleased. Mm. All right. So there's a couple of things I want to talk about. First of all, 17 Days is, I think, one of the classic B-sides. It's a song mm. that a lot of fans love. I never tire of hearing that opening. I can't even tell. <laughs> and yeah. that. Like, I mean, yeah. it's just like it, it never fails. So amazing song. But the other thing I want to talk about is I'm curious. Was he? I mean, how is he losing interest in the Apollonia Six album? I, I, it's possible, but it, it's not even out in the. I don't know. It. it I just wonder where that's coming from or who said that. Um, I see what you're saying. Like, where, where is that coming from? I don't know. I've never really heard that. Only, only thing I can wrap my head around that is, you know, he just has so many projects going on at the same time, along with the movie and everything. I can imagine, like, it's a lot to be, okay, I got to super focus on this. And, the giant, and of course, he's already, like, jumping all over the place anyway i mean we see that uh, the way he works so I, yeah I don't, know, I don't know if he's saying it's it's a bad thing for he's probably well okay, i'm gonna focus on this now this might be more of a priority or something yeah as, as we see what he's about to start doing this week right yeah so, so i gotta i gotta give a shout out to marcus i didn't know you were a fellow alum i'm also a georgia tech alum as well as kanisa williams darling nisi i actually graduated in 92 um so that's awesome 
Thank you so much. And I'm glad that this is your guilty pleasure on Saturday mornings, because I know mm -hmm. that you could be spending your Saturday mornings in a lot of different ways. You don't have to be with us every week, but you are. So we really appreciate you and everybody else who's taking time out of their Saturdays to talk about Prince, because what else should we talk about? I think we should talk about Prince. It's just like a bottomless pit of amazingness. So I am so happy to have all of you here. And Tracy is saying, cool, my sister's a Georgia Tech alum as well. So we got a lot of Georgia Tech alums in the house. And then let's see, JJ loves Prince is saying, maybe losing interest in the sense that he felt like it was, I like that, JJ loves Prince. Thank you for that. That makes a lot of sense. And that is done, it's in the can. Um, you know, we already have like a, a, compila you know, a compilation of it. Thank you, JJ Loves Prince. That makes sense. And let's see what else. Let's see. All right. I don't know about this 17 Days Piano House Mix that's out on YouTube. That's fire. I got to find that. Hmm. That would be interesting. Um, <laughs> I was. Isn't that, wouldn't that be, I, I think it'd be interesting <laughs> because actually um, I was listening to that awesome, awesome Lade mix of the dance yesterday because Tanja mm -hmm. had posted it on Twitter and I couldn't stop playing it because uh, first of all, I love awesome Lade, but actually, you know, I, I love the dance as well. So it was, it was nice. So the 17 days house mix might also be just as nice as the dance. We don't know. All right, we're gonna move on to our next se section and we are going to go to page 96 and 97. And the reason why it's red, I just wanted to remind myself that Prince probably wasn't at this session, but we are going to read about it because it's about Prince songs. All right, so Monday, March 19, 1984, Another Lonely Christmas, God Instrumental, Love and Sex, Pop Life, Possess, With Lyrics, Traffic Jam, Weekend F, Wind Does Cry, Paisley Park Instrumental, 17 Days, Sunset Sound Studio 3, 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. Only four hours, so that probably means Prince wasn't there. Producer Prince, artist Prince, engineer Peggy Matt McCreary. And this is our quote from Prince. One thing I ain't gonna, I ain't going to run out of is music. Mm. Love this quote. This is a really good quote, Dwayne. One thing I ain't going to run out of is music. And we are so grateful for Prince and all the music that he created for us in his lifetime. It's, it's, it's really mind boggling to think about all the music that Prince has created. All right. It is unlikely that Prince attended the session, but he requested that Peggy McCreary make two cassette mm -hmm. and safe copies of 10 songs that he created over the last three months. I'm not going to read them again because I read them before. The purpose of compiling all these songs is unclear, but it was probably for a final review before he started assembling the locked version of the Purple Rain album and decide which album tracks would be released as singles and which B-sides would create the best pairings. Prince also probably wanted to focus on where he could assign some of these songs. This is Matt Fink. I know that he wrote a lot of songs for the movie soundtrack. Of course, they only picked eight, eventually nine. Editor, meaning Dwayne, out of probably, I don't know, 40. There's a lot of material they went through to pick out these those best songs. And he was still writing stuff for the movie as he went along. Of the tunes assembled during the session, only one track would appear on the Purple Rain soundtrack. Three would become B-sides. One would appear in some form on his future albums, and four, Love and Sex, Possess, Traffic Jam, and Paisley Park Instrumental would not be released in this form during his lifetime. Two C90 cassettes were created. Mm. All right. So even though Prince wasn't in the studio, this is, in my personal opinion, is an extremely important day. If, you know, what Duane is saying is true in terms of figuring out what's going to make the final cut for Purple Rain, what's going to end up on the B sides and whatnot, I am, st I still wish Love and Sex would have been released some kind of way in real time. It's, it's actually one of my favorite favorites of all of Prince songs. I'm 
compelled to it. I don't know. It's something about it. This version, not the, you know, Sheila E version. And obviously when I heard the possessed music in the purple rain film, I always was like, when this going to come out, you know, it's gotta be a B side for a possessed. Cause I always love the song. And then obviously when we got to see it live, it was on fire. So I was just like, when is this possessed coming out? And it never did during his, his lifetime. So we obviously got another lonely Christmas, another lonely Christmas as a B side, got instrumental as a B side, pop life on another album. We got, you know, oh, that, that's what I wanted to mention pop life. Yes. I mean, looking at that list, I just, I'd be, I'm, I'm like one of these people, like pop life, like how did that, I wonder <laughs> what you're thinking, like, this is, this is nice. This is dope. But let me hold this because this would be this too much because I'll, I'll be like, yo, that got to come out right now. Like, I would be tripping if I heard Pop Life <laughs> before Pro Brian. Like, what? It's like, man, you could that would have been a crazy B-side. That would have been a crazy B-side. Do you, th do you think you should have released it, released it as a, a B-side as opposed to on Around the Roll in the Day? Uh, well, hmm. I will say this. I think it would have been crazy on uh, related to Purple Rain. Uh, but I feel like when it came out, it didn't get the shine that I felt like it should in terms like I wish there was a video or something and he performed it, you know, out and about at that time. So I, maybe if it would have came back out in the Purple Rain time, we would have heard him play that live and it would have been one of those like it would have been like a, a erotic city or something like mm. it would have been a good class you know, oh pop life in the summertime like that would have popped that would have been popping yeah and i already put this up but it warrants like pointing out i love this comment from michael parks baseline on pop life good grief mm -hmm. exactly mm -hmm. And I'm actually with Stacy. I do think it fit on Around the Roll of the Day. It would have been better as a B-side maybe for Purple Rain if it came out during Purple Rain era. I don't and I, and obviously it wouldn't really fit in the film. I don't I don't really think of any place mm. where in terms of the lyrical content mm. you know um, right. that's so it, it it makes sense. The thing only thing I would say about Around the World of the Day though I <clears throat> I don't like the way it ends on there. Like it's almost somewhat like that song deserves to be the full on. It just sounded kind and you know, that whole funny. That mean that always kind of like, ah, why did you do that? Cause it just stops. The, you can't be at no club, you know, or be out and, and the song going to stop. But I love the 12 inch version. Cause the 12 inch version. Yeah. And that's why I say it would have just been a dope B side and let it play. Like, man. Cause yeah. I was mad when the album version. The hell? <laughs> like, well, that happened with me all the time. If any right. Prince song was too short, except for I Wonder You, I think I Wonder You is a great mm. length. I, I love that it's so short. But whenever a song faded, I got mad. Because like, why did why it's fading? Right. Right. And then fade. also I got madder and madder as the years went by when there were more and more songs on the album because I knew that he was editing these pretty heavily mm -hmm. in order to have all these songs when, you know, back when we had like our, what time is it? When you got three side, you know, three songs on each side and they could just ride and you can just get all in right. the groove. Um, I, I really missed that. Um, but yeah, it was, I, I love what Stacy said. It was a teaser for the 12 inch. <laughs> it's basically. Yeah. And then Deja is saying, I agree, Michael, I can't be all into the groove. And then all of a sudden the song stops and makes <laughs> me mad because it takes me out of the zone. I am totally with you there. And Nick is saying Prince did the right thing by holding pop life for a year. Mm. Yeah, it's it, it's just so wild. I mean, I know we already read about this, but I still think it is so wild that he recorded pop life during the purple rain right. era it's just like yeah. that is so crazy yeah man welcome so much from manchester uk i don't know if i'm pronouncing your name correctly but welcome wassum you know it's it's also cool too in a sense that 
you didn't hear it. He, mm -hmm. he didn't. He wasn't like playing it out in shows or nothing either. Like, yeah, he kept that. No, we gonna hold that. You know. So I, that's kind of dope too. Like, because he could have been just kind of teasing it out. At least as far as I know, I I never heard any performances of it uh, early early on. But I didn't uh, either. Yeah. So yeah, he was. He still could hold some good stuff and until it's ready. So y'all ready for it? Yeah. And also, obviously, that was a different era when a lot of stuff wasn't leaking as soon as some of the things um are leaking because i was about to go on a tangent i will go on a little tangent so Bilal is um performing soon in new york he's actually performing his love for sale album um i think at the blue note if i remember correctly and i bought tickets immediately because it's my favorite Bilal record but it never got released because it got leaked mm -hmm. you know the interscope was like nope we're not releasing it and I just felt so bad for him because I think it's it's definitely his best album. All right. So TP is saying, I wonder why they didn't consider making Purple Rain a double album. The, I mean, I for me, it would be because 1999 was a double album. And I don't think anyone has ever had two double albums back to back. Correct me if I'm wrong. All the music heads in here. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I mean, it would have been great if we could have had two uh, double albums from Prince back to back. But I don't think Warner Brothers wanted to do that. Thank you so much, Lisa, for being here. You're never late. You're always on time. And yeah. yes, Michael, pop life is still relevant. <clears throat> and awesome. You coming to see Bilal? Uh, that would be amazing. I bought tickets to both shows back to back. I was like, this is like, <laughs> this is like a one and a lifetime event and I, I love that album so so i am thrilled yes vanessa is also coming that's amazing we will see each other and yes lisa says warner brothers probably would say no on that mm -hmm. and this is also a good point blade brown they were trying to maximize the sales of purple rain because if it was a double album it would have been more expensive and yes pop life still speaks today hello welcome val thank you so much for actually being with us here what's up val what's up all right so we're gonna get our more reading on we're gonna uh move on to page 297 and if michael dean doesn't mind doing the, all um, right <clears throat> wednesday uh march 21st 1984 17 days computer blue darling nikki possessed instrumental sunset sound studio 3 12 30 p.m 5 30 a.m man uh booked locked out producer prints artist prints engineer prints assistant engineers peggy mac mccrary and probably david leonard it's a quote from prince the only thing i have disliked is the eight excuse me the only thing i have disliked is the late hours it's not that i like to go to bed early it's just that when i'm working it gets pretty weird <laughs> prince <laughs> prince had chosen the songs that deserve focused attention and today he and peggy mccrary and probably david leonard as well begin whittling down the tracks for release the entire session was dedicated to edits crossfades and a rough assembly of songs for the album. 17 Days was edited from 7 minutes and 32 seconds to 3 minutes and 56 seconds by removing much of the repetition as well as Brenda Bennett's speech at the end. And the first lyrics begin at 42 seconds instead of a minute and 9. The entire final 3 minutes of jamming was eliminated. Darling Nikki was edited the least. Prince removed a 30-second section of drums and guitar, and guitar at 2 minutes and 42 seconds to make room for When Doves Cry on the album. Prince went back and forth about keeping the lyrics on Possessed. During this session, he muted the track's vocals, creating an instrumental version because it was still being considered as a B-side and for use in the movie. He was apparently proud of the song as he eventually placed the instrumental in the film. The instrumental version was played on the PA before his upcoming First Avenue birthday show later in the year. And the vocal version was played over the PA at the after party 
and perform live with the revolution during the concert. Comp uh, Computer Blue was edited once again, making more room on the album. Work was also done adjusting the se uh, segue between Computer Blue and Darla Nikki. A 60 minute tape was created for Prince to review on the ride home. Uh, it is unclear when engineers, which engineers were responsible for the edits on many of his tracks from this era. David Leonard or Peggy McQuarrie generally took care of them during the actual session, but there is no documentation of this. If an engineer was busy working on a mix, Prince was notorious for just grabbing someone he trusted from the Sunset Sound family and asking for a favor, including Richard um, McCurman. Yeah. Uh, he'd sneak things to me. He sneaked things in to me to edit. I cut the 24 track a couple of times. And then after that, he wanted me to edit all of his 24 track recordings. I'd be working with other people and he'd open the door a, a little bit and he'd say, you got to edit this. You got to edit this. So I go out and edit stuff. It was sometimes uh, it was some it was something that wasn't on the work orders. There was no documentation of me doing that. I have no clue what songs I have no clue what the songs were. He'd just say, I want you to cut here and here and cut that part out and it should work. And I'd hear it and I would cut it. All right. So first of all, even though we've already talked about this, <clears throat> we might have some new people here. It just pains me to hear how often he cut on computer blue. <laughs> it just, got, Chop. It just keep chopping. Oh, yeah. Chop it, chop it, chop it. And we don't get the, the full version, you know, in a pristine audio until post prints, which is yeah. like so painful. And then the other thing, which is, which is interesting, is how he really didn't mess with Darling Nikki that much. And mm -hmm. also, it, it was really interesting, like, how much he chopped 17 days. And why wasn't the full 17 days on the 12-inch okay. of Purple Rain? Question. That's a good question. So, yeah, that's, that's really interesting. Hmm. I, I love this. Jamie was like... P, P was cutting, and I love this, Michael. Chop again. Everybody should know. <laughs> chop. Chop. And, yes, Kim, we cutting. Let's see. Uh, and then let's see Maldonado is saying, I want father's song, but the movie version. Mm. Read it on just piano. Okay. Thank you so much, Andre, for this. So Andre is saying that the rock band Chicago's first three albums were double LPs. Damn. Okay. All right. So there is a precedent for this. And then I Rio. think TP was saying, what was TP? What happened? There's so, so much in here. Uh, something I wanted to point out. Oh, yeah. With it being a soundtrack, I think they could have made an exception. Saturday Night Fever was a double album and also a really big bestseller Saturday Night Fever uh, was on the charts for a very long time hmm. and I love this comment from Kim Ugg editing it's so necessary though and we get 12 inch mixes but we didn't for 17 days which I don't understand and then also Man Ray is saying Stevie Wonder released Songs in the Key of Life in 1976 and followed it up with Journey Through the Secret Life of Plants in 1979. Both were double albums. Thank you so much. You guys. But that's Stevie Wonder. Like, that's the, the super exception to the rule. <laughs> uh, good point. Yes, it's Stevie. <laughs> and welcome, Andrew. You're never late. Thank you so much for being here from Las Vegas. Yes, Nick, things that make you go, hmm, yeah. Hilarious. And <laughs> yes, and I, like, I would love to hear the drum intro to Darling Nikki as well. Very good point. And, do, do, do. and I like this. Technically, their first four albums, their fourth LP, we're talking about Chicago, was a live album. Damn. All right. Chicago yeah. must have been hitting, hitting like the three double albums and then do a live album. Boy, that's the Prince dream. If 
That's such a good point, Michael. It would have been the Prince dream and the Prince fan dream. Well, yeah, that's yeah it's that's all of us. <laughs> we have like, oh, <laughs> another the third double album. Then we dropping the, the live. Oh. It'd be, uh, it'd be crazy. Oh my God! If we could go back in time, that would have been amazing. Yes. In the quantum, right. in the quantum realm, where Warner beat Warner Brothers, let Prince do whatever the hell he wanted to do. <laughs> you want to do a triple album? Yes. <laughs> Please. <laughs> Don't get started. Triple albums. Yeah, <laughs> we'll take them. <laughs> yeah. All right. I like this point um, about what Chris Borne is saying. Chicago is a white super group and Prince was a black no. solo artist. So for show, sure, for show. Sure. We already know what time it is. Yeah. All <laughs> right. So we're gonna um and then let's see, Roddy saying Windows Cry with the bass sounds like a different song. I'm sure it does. Hmm. And Jamie is saying, This is a business. This is a business. <laughs> and you ain't too far gone to see that yet. Yeah. But I don't know. I think. I mean, 1999 did well. I think with the film and the and how popular the film was, I'm kind of with TP now. Like they could have released a double Purple Rain soundtrack. We could have gotten Man. to be a Martinair and Sex Shooter and all the other uh, songs in the film. And I think it would have done well just because it was such a juggernaut. Just the whole Purple Rain era mm -hmm. and everything. So yeah, and. Yeah. Yeah, I, guess, yeah. I, I guess looking back, they had no idea Purple Rain was going to sell what it did sell, though. Like, it went to be like, what's like 40 something million? Like, no one, you don't know that going into you it. You don't know that. You're right. Okay. <laughs> Good point, Michael Dean. Good point. All right. But like Blade Brown saying, hindsight. <laughs> yes. Exactly. <laughs> For sure. And let's see. Lisa was saying, I was given eight song titles in advance of Purple Rain, and only three or four were on the album. Oh, wow. All right. So uh, were the, do you still have that? Meaning like just a track listing? Like, is it aligned with what's in the book or is it different? <laughs> um, let's see. JD is saying, I think the film was viewed as a risk bat fan. Yep, it was. I suspect Warners was being cautious. Hi, JD. I hope you're well. And let's see. The Secret Life of Plants was a soundtrack by Tanja. Uh, mm. And Rodney says, this is a good point, Rodney. The time on the Purple Rain album would have changed the trajectory of the time. Mm. I think that's true. Mm. The tra yeah, it probably, I mean, yeah. The tra I think so, trajectory that they did get, though, unfortunately, was that they were done. Yeah, yeah. I know. But, I mean, maybe just... It I, could have, maybe it would have probably helped them stay together, possibly, because of, like, Hey, you guys gonna go on tour with us? Da, da, da. I, who knows? We never. Yeah, know. yeah. It would have been different. I agree. Yep. And then, Electric Intercourse is one of them. Yes. And okay. Um, Keep it moving. All right. So, <laughs> just her, those other double albums were not all Warner's artists. They were different. Hmm. And then let's see, Kim is saying the film was for the marketing for the album. No more room in the budget. Mm. Let's see. Christina yeah, said maybe they wanted to keep it a single album for the casual fan. Less expensive than a double album. Yeah. I think in the long run, as much as I would love the double album, I think it was it's exactly what it was supposed to be. You know, it, it, it made Prince work on this music for a while, edited it down, and it worked. I mean, it did work for, for what it what, what it was. It was spectacular. It's, it worked spectacularly. You know what I mean? Like, it wouldn't, it, if a double album came out, I don't think it would have necessarily, I don't think it would have sold as many copies only because it had been so expensive for a lot of people. Uh, it still would have been a great album. Uh, but Purple Rain right now is, is a fantastic album. Like, Yeah, you know, it is. It really is. Let's see. <laughs> that may be true. <laughs> Who knows? That may be true. I don't remember. Does he talk about that in 
on time? I'm not y'all sure. Can, y'all can be on the on the movie, but no dough. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let's get to the next day, which is March 22nd, which is a Thursday. And we are on page 298. And we are talking about Computer Blue, Crossfade slash edits, Darla Nikki, Sex Shooter edits, The Beautiful Ones edits, Let's Go Crazy edits, Sunset Sound Studio 3, 4 p.m. to 10.30 p.m., booked, locked out, producer prints, artist prints, engineer prints, assistant engineers, Peggy Mac McCreary, and probably David Leonard. This is Peggy McCreary talking. We edited Computer Blue down a few times. I can still hear a few problems with the song. (laughs) As someone who edits, and I know Michael Dean, you also edit, you always know like what Mm -hmm. your problem areas are and you can see them, you can hear them even when other people can't. So I'm sure Peggy did as well. Apparently not satisfied with the previous day's Segway work, Prince continued to perfect the cross fade between Computer Blue and Darling Nikki. With songs like Computer Blue and Let's Go Crazy, Prince had produced a more intricate sound. Susan Rogers noticed this while the album was being created. When you think about it, you hear that guitar, you hear his incredible keyboard skills, and you realize that at any given moment on that record, he could do that. He could have filled up that record with virtuoso guitar playing, with virtuoso keyboard playing and with virtuoso singing. Then here's another thing to consider, his lyrics. It's not Leonard Cohen, but think about, he's talking about an us. I would die for you, let's go crazy, take me with you. It's a generous record, he's happy to be alive. Hmm. Additional edits took place on several of the songs being placed in the movie including Sex Shooter, The Beautiful Ones, and Let's Go Crazy. So that would be interesting to hear unedited Beautiful beautiful Ones. And obviously with the Sex Shooter 12-inch, I think, I can't remember if it's called like a remix or an edit. I don't know if that's like the original edit or if that's a remix. I'd have to look that up with the quickness. Hmm. But let's see what's going on in here in the chat. <laughs> and two, you know, we always got to keep in mind these edits, these are not digital. This is like straight mm. quarter inch tape, whatever, you know, cutting and splicing, which is hard. And, you know, you don't, there's not a lot of room for error. Uh, you know, today, obviously, they could blend it all, the beats it all match, but they were doing it by hand back then. Like, so that's, that's quite the achievement. All right. So, <laughs> so Sammy's saying that the Morris Day said Prince won all the soundtrack money on the Vlad TV interview. Mm. And oh, oh no, Lisa, I'm so sorry to hear that you lost all of your purple stuff along with your vinyl in 2014. That would be Thanks. oh, and we got a me too as well. Oh my, that's um Man, what happened. Yeah, that would be painful. And uh, I love this uh, from Michael Parks, Chop Again, Peggy. And a quote for Susan. All right, I want to hear, I want to read this from Smitty Rock 70. It says, by the early 1980s, record industry was in financial doldrums from 80 to 83. Only three double albums went platinum as Bruce Springsteen's The River. Dan Vogelberg, Vogelberg, Berg, and Peace 1999. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Smitty Rock, uh, for this additional information. Yes, I'm sure it, it, it still hurts. It, it hurts me, and, and, I, and I can't imagine what you must feel like, Lisa. Um, mm-hmm. And yes, cutting tape. I, there's got to be like an art and you know, and science to that. And Awesome. I, I've right. said this before, but you, you know how I learned how to cut and edit tape <laughs> was mm-hmm. watching Jam and Lewis on BET hmm. when they had uh, Donnie Simpson. When Donnie Simpson came to Minneapolis to fly time, and they take him in the studio and, and they're they're working on a fishnet, and in that they show they cut they actually 
Jimmy Jimmy Jam takes the blade, cuts the tape, and shows you how he cuts it at an angle. He laid it. That's how I learned. I, I went to the studio a couple months after that, just off of watching that. Hmm. And they're cut, <laughs> figuring it out. Oh, okay. Let's put the tape on. Run back. <laughs> oh, how do you know how to do that? Oh, man, I was studying, you know, Jimmy Jam <laughs> TV. Yeah. So Lenny's saying Bootsy is great at cutting tape. Mm. And uh, let's see. Ron is saying I lost all my original vinyl in a house flood. Oh, no. Mm. Ah, I think my oh, mom was house some stuff I had in my closet when I moved out. My mom always threatened <laughs> to throw out some of my stuff. So I, I totally understand it. But um, <sighs> gratefully, yeah. never did. So I, I hate that kind of stuff, too. Now, as a parent. I understand the moms. I'll be listening to this mess anyway. <laughs> Thank the Lord. Yeah. <laughs> Thank the Lord. All right. Chris Bernays saying I took broadcast journalism in high school back in the 80s, and we learned to cut and splice too. That's amazing that mm -hmm. you were able to do that back in high school. That's that's pretty awesome. Oh, no. So Michael Parks is saying, lost all my P albums in 12 inches years ago, moving them around during the summer. Mm. Mm. Yes. Yeah. Um, and we got to always give love to Rick James. Rick James Street Songs brought, brought Motown back from near bankruptcy. Mm. And Rodney is talking about five inch Akai Reel, the good old days. <laughs> all right. So we are going to go to our, I think our final read, if it's okay <clears throat> with you, Michael Dean. Started no, it's not. No. <laughs> not Two ninety nine. Two ninety nine. Yeah, two ninety nine. Friday, March. All right, here 20. we go. Uh, Purple Rain album compiled, and this is the list on the work order, not necessarily the compilation track order. Wind Doves Cry, I Would Die For You, Baby, I'm A Star, The Beautiful Ones, Darling Nikki, Purple Rain, Let's Go Crazy, Computer Blue, Sunset Sound Studio, 2 p.m., 8 p.m., Blocked, Locked Out, Producer Prince, Artist Prince, Engineer Prince, Assistant Engineer Peggy Mack, McCrary. Quote from Susan Rogers, sequencing for the record was a very important part of the process back when the album was the work of art that the consumer was purchasing, not singles. On these, excuse me, on those early records, you hear that unrestrained, unfiltered rawness on some of the tracks, whereas Purple Rain was very carefully arranged. It's a masterpiece. Susan Rogers. Mm. Prince's music had changed and everyone around him noticed the difference. The message of 1999 was that the world was in its final chapter, so you might as well enjoy yourself. In many ways, Purple Rain was about the arrival of hope. After the apocalyptic tone of 1999, Prince added the concept of the dawn to his work. It wasn't a coincidence that he sang about being the Messiah. Prince was on his doom. <laughs> he was on his Atreides. Um, <clears throat> anyway, being the Messiah, considering the world was supposed to have stopped in the new millennium. This was Prince rising from the tomb after three days and strutting his stuff as if to say, did you miss me? Mm -hmm. To those who are familiar with his work and an introduction, introductionary shot across the bow to those who weren't. To me, Prince was just finally getting popular, and I felt that this was his best time. I thought 1999 and Purple Rain were his peak, remembers Peggy McCrary. I feel that part, excuse me, I feel that part of that has to do with the chemistry between us. It was a great time. This was a raw genius to watch him come in every day, and during this period, he was just on. For this compilation, Prince was still looking for the structure of the album 
and the flow needed to tell the story of the movie. But it was important that the album stand on its own. So Prince spent five hours editing the tracks together, looking for the proper sequence. Often this is done by trial and error to see how the songs work in context. The track order for this compilation isn't known, <clears throat> but the absence of Take Me With You, one of the best songs on the album, <laughs> it's not in the book, should be noted as it will be as it was still slated to be on the Apollonia 6 album. We closed the good book. <laughs> yes, we could close the good book. Mm. So, like I said um, previously, for those of you who may have not been here in the beginning, in the accompanying playlist, um, I put the compilation of the Purple Rain album in this order. If you want to listen to it, to just you know get a feel for how it would sound like in this order, I think I, I don't know. I, I, I it's 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 re it's a really interesting compilation in that you're ending with computer blue instead of purple rain and there's a lot of interesting choices um in this particular compilation yeah i wonder well it does say that's not necessarily the comp compilation track order so well yeah that's that true you know yeah but i, I would say I don't, you know in terms of purple rain not being at the end i, I always thought like I thought it worked better the way it was in the movie with mm -hmm. Baby the Star at the end. Yeah. I saw the album ending like that too. Yeah. No, I, I'm with you, Michael. I think it would have been really awesome. And I I wonder though, I kind of think I would have preferred When Does Cry as the opener. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Instead yeah. of Let's Go Crazy. Just with the, you know, like, with the with the guitar, you know, like da -da 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 -da. like just just amazing, like it just like jolts you. Oh yeah, just come right out. I was I can't remember who it was. I don't know if it was in a James Brown documentary or the Little Richard documentary, but someone talked about how when you put on an album, it should just jolt you, you know, like just mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. put you there. And I think that When Doves Cry um, would do that for sure. Yeah, I, well, I I agree with you. I, I do think Let's Go Crazy does that too, though. I mean, in terms of the jolt part about it. Yeah. But either, yeah, but yeah, I would have been, yeah, that would have been shocking as I think about it now when doves cry. That would have been like, like you said, yeah. Yeah, it was just like put you in there, you know, like, yeah. like <laughs> trans transform you. I think <laughs> Let's Go Crazy in terms of like, if I think about all the music that he has released at that point and what he was kind of known for, I wouldn't have seen Let's Go Crazy come first just because I wouldn't associate him with rock like that. Mm -hmm. um, I, when Doves Cry would have been like, well, yeah, this is Prince, like, even though it was still on some other, but it would have been easy to understand, like, yo, this is the next level of what I heard in 1999. But I think Let's Go Crazy is like, no, I'm coming for the rock. <laughs> And I'm yeah. coming hard, you know, almost it's like y'all gonna get, get mad in the comments. Almost in some ways, how like Beyonce is coming for the country. Just like, I didn't see that coming. Like, I'm gonna do this style, you know. So I think let's go crazy, perfect for that. Cause it's like, yeah, you didn't know he was gonna be on some rock hero type stuff, you know, and he killed it. But uh, anyway. Yeah. So AJJ, I, I don't dislike Dearly Beloved. I think it's amazing. I'm just saying that. Um, and obviously a lot of you in the chat, um, love dearly. I love dearly beloved. I, I do too. I just think it would be re really interesting if Windows mm -hmm. Cry would have opened it just because of that amazing, like mini guitar solo at the beginning. And I just thinking of that quote and I wish I could remember who said that quote about having that jolt as the first thing. I think that would be more of a jolt than the dearly yeah. beloved. And, and I think in, in reality, in terms of how a lot of us heard this for the first time, it was with Dove's Cry was that joke, you know, with the first mm -hmm. single. Before we heard it. Yeah. So it, and in a sense, it still did exactly what you were saying. Like, that was the thing that kicked it all off anyway. And it was incredible. Number one. Yeah. Incredible. And the video, like the doors. I, yeah. I like, and the smoke. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Prince crawling across, across the floor, the, the doves, the flowers, the mm -hmm. purple. I mean, it's just, it's, it's, it's an amazing um, song. It's an amazing video. The, the double, you know, when they, the split screen doubling up, um, it was really amazing. I was, I think, in the context of the movie, I think when Doves Cry was the, I mean, excuse me, uh, Let's Go Crazy is the better choice. Mm hmm. Uh, in yeah, terms of the movie and the performance and starting it that way. Uh, yeah. I think it works better. Yep. And then JJ Loves Prince says, I think you also have to keep in mind that there needs to be two openings, one for both mm -hmm. sides. When Doves Cry open side two. That's right. That's right. That's true. And yes, it's an amazing video. Loved it. And Alex is saying the joke back in the day, he would open his shows with both those songs, Doves Cry or Let's Go Crazy. Thanks, thanks so much, Alex, for that. And yeah, I mean, I'm sure everybody likes Dearly Beloved. I'm just talking about an alternate possibility. That's all. I'm really into brainstorming, but I won't get I won't go down that road. Let's okay. see. I go back to some of the things. I think this was Peggy saying <clears throat> of like this album was the introduction in her opinion of hope into sort of his sort of worldview mm. or his you know, multiverse of prints it comes from the 1999 you know dire sort of you know, we're gonna die so let's party and now like you say it's coming with this is a new outlook uh you know and you know, i'm the messiah i don't think he's presenting himself as the messiah but putting that sort of thing out there is it's like yeah we don't we're not gonna die like I'll die for you, you know, that it's, it is brilliant in terms of it. When you think of that way in this album and sort of, it's a rising, like you said, rising from the tomb, it's rising out from something else. And this is a new thought. This is a new mm -hmm. worldview of, of mm -hmm. Prince. Uh, it's fascinating too. Yeah, that's, that's a really good point. The dawn, welcome to the dawn. Thank you so much, Alex. I really do appreciate that. It means a lot. Um, let's see. All right, so let's go on to our. Ooh, well, let's see. Hi, how are you? It's so great to see you here. That jolt you were referring to, I felt with America on Around the Rolling of the Day. I have. I remember having my brother's headphones on and that guitar riff. Yes. And also like the the 12 inch version of America is just and the video for America. I mean it's like America I don't think it's talked about enough. It's an extraordinary yeah. song, extraordinary video, extraordinary. It was the first time I saw Prince play drums, you mm -hmm. know, like visually see him. So that was like, you know, obviously live. Obviously you have the drums in the um one of the Prince videos, the from the second album, but it wasn't like live. And that was also the first time. Well, the imagery of that red, black, and green at the beginning of that lets you know what it was. I was like, oh, okay, Prince. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, <clears throat> okay. So I love that because he didn't have to do that. He was letting you know what I'm representing because it could have been the American flag, but no, it was black. That was that was cold. Yeah, it really was. It was all Our, political. <laughs> yes. All right. So we are at the end, but we still have our salon portion. And um Pan African, Pan -African flag. flag. Mm -hmm. And Sakia saying I didn't pick up on the red, black, and green. Good point. Um and Smitty is saying, it's funny, the great Billy Gibbons from ZZ Top always raved about the opening guitar lick from When Doves Cry as his favorite solo. Mm. And, and to be honest, we, we kind of talked about this last week in terms of the Rock and Roll Hall of um, Fame performance, the George Harrison part. Mm. And that's another reason why I kind of would have love for Purple Rain to kind of start with that guitar lick um, just trying to get prince higher up in the rankings of the guitar gods we know he's a guitar god but just in terms of like all the critics and you know the non-prince family people recognizing what an amazing 
guitarist Prince is. So that's another reason why I think that uh, When Doves Cry would have been really great um, mm -hmm. as an opener. But When Doves Cry, I mean, but Let's Go Crazy is, is obviously very amazing. With the dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to get through this thing called life. Mm -hmm. And luckily we have Prince music to help us get through life. And we are now at the end of week 12 of What Did Prince Do This Week? So there were no new songs this week, but there were four additional studio visits. So, so far in 1984, we've had 58 studio visits. Um, and then love this, this Billy Gibbons asked P how he did it and Prince told him he could never duplicate it. Um, let's see. At least not by you. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably. <laughs> yes. So these are all the songs. So again, I just want to remind everyone, if you go to the schedule, um, which is, we pull up a banner for a change, bookclub.polishedsolid.com. You can get the schedule, what we're reading. You can get um, the slide deck, which is towards the bottom. And then you would be able to, um, you know, do do some more deep diving because this 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 actually goes to a database that you can sort and do all sorts of stuff with if you want it. All right, so let's um, go to the purple world. I want to give a shout out to Hassan, also known as Neo Manifesto on Twitter, for letting us know that there is going to be a 4K release of the Purple Rain this year because I know. Michael Green, you're all about 4K. All, yeah, baby. Let's go. Yes. yes. And speaking of which, like for celebration, there's going to be a 4K screening of Purple Rain. So we, mm -hmm. yeah, that, that was that was on the list of the the things for celebration. Okay. Well, it said high definition. That's a very tricky Okay, word. okay. All right. <laughs> that could just be <laughs> the Blu-ray. <laughs> Uh, when I saw high definition, I just like, okay, 4K. Uh, but yeah, you're absolutely right, Michael. That's not what it said. Let's let's be precise with our language, high definition. But it's really amazing to know that there will be a 4K. And thinking, when I was watching Glam Slab, Slam last night, I was thinking about what you said earlier about wishing that for sure the get off videos, like the that whole VHS, like if they were 4K, Mm -hmm. As well as all of Prince's videos, you know, for that matter, you know, like all the videos for Purple Rain, um, you know, obviously When Doves Cry would be amazing in 4K because um, it has such an ambiance. So I'm excited about this 4K release. And yes. then maybe we can get a 4K release of Under the Cherry Moon. That would be amazing. That would be dope. Would be dope. <laughs> yes. Yes. And I love that yeah, is saying we need to see some extra footage in that F4K release. Um, let's see. <laughs> I hope not, Blay Brown. Blay Brown says throw an IG smoothed out filter on the DVD and call it HD. Let's hope not. Um, now, Warner Brothers is actually one of the better companies when it comes to 4K releases of their catalog material. Um, so they'll they'll do a good job, you know. Yeah, uh, I'm confident in that. Yeah, and this would be wonderful, Lisa. I wholeheartedly agree. Purple Rain deserves another theater release this year. That would be amazing to get a new um, generation introduced to Purple Rain. And yes, to that, 4K you, uh, under Chair Moon, and yes, to in color, even mm -hmm. though. Some people tell me it does not exist, but I think there, I'm always like hopeful that it does. <clears throat> so um, Funkatopia on March 18th had a, a whole show. They invited um, Eloy, also known as Prince's friend. It was a really great conversation where they went through all things celebration. So if you want to have that conversation, conversation even though the, you know they already aired it i'm sure they're going to do another one on i think it's april 18th when they announce um, more information about celebration so um but this is a really great conversation and again in the slideshow if you click it 
And I also need to add this to the playlist, uh, add this to the company playlist for this week as well. But then they also, Funkatopia also had an additional conversation with Michael Bland and Sunny T. And, yeah. and actually um, Brown Mark showed up and, and all of that. So that would be, yes, thank you, Lisa. Yeah. Shout, shout out to Funkatopia, man. They're doing their thing. I love yes. it. Yes. Love it. Yep. That would be amazing. And yes. A good summer theater experience, even for just a weekend, if there is a re-release of mm. Purple Rain, for sure. And we already talked about this, but I love that Paisley Park is celebrating the 20th anniversary of musicology on March 29th at Paisley Park. I would love to go, but I'm saving all my money for a celebration. I also want to go um, to the show. I keep going back and forth, but it's just like, can't afford it um, if since I'm going to celebration, but I know this is going to be an amazing show, and I know a lot of people are going, so I hope you guys have an amazing time and report back. Maybe we should have some people on who actually went so we can yeah. live vicariously through you. <laughs> right? Because there's going to be so many people like Levi, Tony M, Tommy Barbarella, and then, you know, Margie Cox. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I, I really wish they would come to New York. If someone has their ear, please mm. tell them to to come to to New York. Get them or, a bag. You'll come. Yeah. <laughs> yes. You got a bag for you over here. Yeah, if I only had that bag, it's a uh, a symbol. Yeah, <laughs> that that would be really really amazing. And hopefully, I mean, it would be great if they would also do a gig around celebration. So, yeah, the, um, yes, El Michelle Funkatobia celebration episode was really informative. Um, okay, so I didn't I didn't see this. Thank you, Sakia. Okay, so, darling Nikki posted on her IG stories about the director Blank Panther teaming with a screenwriter working on a musical based on Prince's music. Is this different from the other one that they announced earlier, or is this the same one? Um, um. That's a good question. It's through Universal, and they described it as a musical jukebox movie. Huh. Oh, so a movie. Yeah. Got it. Instead of on like Broadway or what have you. That's 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 pretty Brian, interesting. Brian Coogler produced mm -hmm. it. That would be amazing, actually. I love I'm that idea. I'm interested. Yeah. Yes. Thank you, Christina. And the Steels too uh, will be at the Michael B. and Sunny T. show. And different, yes, Ryan Coogler. We love everything Ryan does, at least I do. Mm -hmm. And let's see what we got next. Um, I want to just make sure if you're local in the Tri City area in New York City, please come on and support Law. He's an amazing live performer. It's going to be the day before the Erotic City 40 Symposium. I'm so grateful for him for aligning his show with the symposium and we're going to have a blast. I know that I will. I've already bought my tickets. So I hope that you will too. And then we are going to be celebrating these amazing four albums on April 12th through 14th at NYU in Brooklyn, but it will also be live stream for those of you who are unable to come. Yay. Adria is Seeing Law, I'm going to see Law, and yes, Law is cool. If you've never seen Law live, he puts on an amazing show. So I can't wait to see what he has in store for us. And the albums we are celebrating is what we've been talking about all year for mm. what let's do this week, which is Purple Rain, Apollonia 6, Ice Cream Castle, as well as the glamorous life, even though I never know, should, should we really be saying in the glamorous life? Because technically it is uh, in the glamorous life. Hmm. The same way with Rom uh, Romance 1600. Sheila E. and Romance 1600. If you've ever looked at that cover. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So everyone should save the day for those of you who are able to make celebration. I am coming to celebration. I'm excited about it, but I'm so excited, Maury, that you're excited about Erotic City 40. I'm very excited about Erotic City 40. It is always an amazing time to spend with all of you and all of my purple friends 
and family. It means so much. Thank you so much, Christina, for appreciating the live stream. And <coughs> yes, these covers are amazing. I love all of these. You know, I love all Prince album covers. That's one of the reasons why I'm a vinyl head because of the album covers. They're so amazing. But I think out of the four, the one I love the most, I think, is um, probably Sheila E's, just because mm -hmm. Sheila, Sheila was, she was everything um, when she came out for me. And I always love this outfit that she has on with her drumsticks on the side, all laced up with the gloves. And I love that it was black and white with the teal and the yellow and it was just really amazing. I, I have this thing about doors. So, you know, you got Apollonia in the door on Purple Rain, and then you got Sheila in front of a door. And I always wanted to go in these spaces as a kid. I was like, I want to go inside these spaces that these women are in front of. <laughs> oh, wow. I'm so excited, Kim, that you're able to join us for Erotic City 40. It would not be the same without you. Thank you so much for coming. It means so much to me really does and, and chris is saying um the glamorous life i think Anne is just saying a book is by an author it's not part of the title that's a good point <laughs> and maury's with me sheila e listen amazing artist i'm so ready to celebrate her yes black and white and classy this is the play brown says apple is Album cover looks like a VHS cover for a trauma B movie. LOL. Can someone tell me? I've never understood what those structures are supposed to be behind Apollonia Six. Does anyone know? They say something about the pillars of salt in the song or something. Okay. Pillars. I thought maybe there was maybe pillar, there pillars, pillars of stone. Oh. It's pillars of stone. Stone. Oh. Yeah. Yes. Let's see. All right. So celebration, 20 to, um, it's like five days this, this year. I'm trying to figure out if it's going to be similar to last year, whereas the last day was really more for VIP. I'm not going VIP because I can't afford it. I'm just going general admission. But um, if you listen to the Funkatopia episode, some of the points that Eloy was making I'm sort of with him. Like it's really hard to um, make your hotel and flight arrangements without kind of knowing like what the structure is going to be. Meaning, like, will the GA have all five days? Because all five days is a new thing that they're doing this year. Mm -hmm. This has always been like four days, so that's interesting. Because as we know, there were some early bird tickets that went on sale um, this past Monday. And Lisa is saying, I think this year's celebration will be huge. And Sakia is saying those discount VIP tickets went very fast. And yes, Dr. Catrice Austin said drop down Dr. for VIP Austin. to level two. Is that the doctor that does like the dentistry stuff? I see you online all the time, sis, doing your thing. And Lisa is still looking for a sponsor. Hilarious. <laughs> Nothing's wrong with that. <laughs> you, have to, you have to do. Well, yeah, you, you do have to be careful. I will say that. Um, well, I am so excited to hear that you picked up the Apollonia LP. I personally think it is one of the best pro productions that Prince has ever done. I know some people disagree, but I love that record. And let's see. Mm. Yeah, that me too, David. I need to understand if they're actual events during the day on Monday or if it just runs into late Sunday night, because otherwise I could, you know, be back at work on Monday. Um, but we will see, hopefully, on April 18th. And let's see. Thanks. VIP. Very important person. Yeah. Hilarious. <laughs> well, all righty. Okay. I don't understand what's going on. Um, what's up? Like, okay. All right. 
So there will be a virtual symposium. I am coming to Minneapolis because I always have, and I'm so looking forward to it. So can you let oh. me know? <laughs> yeah, I, and I see something. Yeah, you should do man. Block. <laughs> oh, we don't entertain foolishness, man. Just uh, block it and keep it moving. <laughs> I wish that oh. I will say this. I wish I knew who these people were. Could you let me know who you are? That would be great. All right. So COM30 virtual symposium is August 10th and 11th. It's going to be virtual. And this is something that Kanisa and I are really looking forward to. <laughs> and let's see. Mm -mm -mm. We are also going to do some after salons one year after for Diamonds and Pearl Super Deluxe because last night I watched Glam Slam 92 again and it was such an amazing experience. Yeah. So we are going to actually do a deep dive like we did for Sign the Times Super Deluxe where we actually go track by track because we didn't have an opportunity to do that when we did the Diamonds and Pearls Super Deluxe virtual celebration. So okay. I am very excited. It's in October. Yeah. And November. Last week of October, all the way through November. Oh, oh I see. November 9th. That's my birthday. Is it really? <laughs> my birthday is November 23rd. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. So we are going to be celebrating <clears throat> birthdays as well as. Diamonds and Pearl Super Deluxe. Yes, yes, yes. Looking forward. All right. Thank you. I really appreciate that. Yeah, so, let me say, we, we we don't even, we're not even paying no mind to no foolishness conversation. Y'all can say whatever you want. Just block, we blocking and keeping it moving. We're not even tripping. We don't know who these people are, so they ain't got no power over us. They watching what we doing, so we are gonna keep them more. This, like somebody said, this is it. What they say this is a safe place. This our house right here. We at home. We grown. This grown folks area. So, please, you can relax with all of the fanatical talk. It's it's it's, it's over. It's not nineteen eighty. It's not the eighties no more. We we all grown up now. So, let's relax. You know what I'm saying? We we, yes. we ain't with it. Thank you. All right, so this is the accompanying playlist. And again, if you go to our book club website and you actually go to the slides and you click on them, you are able to go directly to the playlist or you can go to YouTube at Polish Solid. And if you go all the way down to the bottom, you will be able to see the actual playlist. Mm. And then next week, we will do pages 300 to 306, and we will be talking about Sunday, March 25th, 1984, through Thursday and Saturday. So we are almost done with March. Man, already. <laughs> yes. This year has been like flying by. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it is. That's yes. It. And thank you so much, Andre. I'm so happy that you're impressed with the book club website because that lets me know that you're using it because I'm not doing this for myself. I'm doing it for all of you um, so that you can actually, um, you know, figure out the schedule. Um, you can see, like, again, I created this database for the songs. So if you see any errors or anything like that, please let me know. And obviously we have our slide decks. We have the entire slide deck from last year. If you want to go back and again, if you see any um, errors or anything, I really do appreciate it. And all right. How you want to take us out, Michael Dean? Oh, uh, well, do you, we have any, you got any uh, music on deck? That, I guess we can, whatever we did earlier. Yeah, let's do that. Hey. A message to the Oreo cookie. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, listen, we had a great time again this weekend, Saturday. 
we read about some great material. We got into Purple Rain. Uh, if you haven't already, like and share, subscribe this to all the other Prince fans out there in the community. Let people know this is a dope thing we do every Saturday. It's fun. You know what I'm saying? We can leave the foolishness behind and come in and just vibe on some Prince. So this is great. Thank you, D'Angela. Thank y'all for hanging with us. And also, let me say, I'm going to be there in New York for the symposium. So please tap in, say what's up to your boy, all that good stuff. But with that said, work it like a job. We'll see you next time. Peace. And always remember. <laughs> <laughs> Love the shake button. All right. Like last year.